everybody and welcome back to Beauty by Violet and I am here with Amanda and we are going to be showing you how to do a trial for a traditional bridal and this is another part to my series it's gonna be part what is it part three I think <laughs> so this is how to do a trial for a traditional bridal look Typically, I have everything set up with my uh, chair. We thought for um, Amanda, it might be more comfortable. So she'll be sitting here a while to um, be sitting in this chair and I'm just gonna be using my stool instead of standing. Um, normally, I have my brush belt on, but since I'll be sitting most of the time, it's gonna be hard to be wearing that. And I have my uh, makeup consultation form binder. And in this, I have my consultation forms, which Amanda has already filled out her consultation form. Then I also have my face chart. And from part two, you'll remember you need to have a face chart for your trials so you can track everything that you're doing. I also have in here my contracts. And we will be doing one of those during the trial too. And I also have in here my contracts. And we will be doing one of those during the trial too. I'm going to be going through her consultation form here. And we're doing a traditional bridal, as I said. And then the, the event date is July 4th at 3 o'clock. It's going to be at Turtlelot Park, which is nice because it's just a couple blocks away. And it has really dry and sensitive skin and uh, she has psoriasis. So this is good to know uh, because it's gonna affect the way that the makeup uh, goes on and also wears. Eye color is hazel, hair color is red, no allergies. And her current skincare routine is a moisturizer. For makeup, she uses foundation, mascara, and lipstick. This is good to know because uh, if somebody doesn't wear a whole lot of makeup, you're going to want to start out light and then build on that because they're not going to be used to wearing a lot of makeup. So traditional bridal will work well for her. We do have uh, her plus three of her bridesmaids getting their makeup done. And then I've also had her <clears throat> fill out the skin sensitivities and allergy disclaimer and initial that and then she is uh, signed and dated the consultation form. So first what we're going to do is we're going to prep the canvas. We want to make sure that uh, we are starting with the best canvas that we possibly can. You're also going to want to make sure that their skin is clean before you get started. First thing I'm going to do is I've noticed she has a little bit of eye makeup left uh, on right now so we're going to want to take that off. So I'm just going to use an eye makeup remover and I usually have a bowl of water on every job. Just bring a plastic bowl with you. You never know when you're going to need it. So if you just want to close your eyes, we're just going to take off the eye makeup. And I'm going to take a Q-tip if you want to look up. I'm just going to take off the eye makeup underneath the eye. And I'm just using the dry side to go over, take off any of the leftover. Since she's wearing a little bit of foundation, what I'm going to do is just take an SD wipe. <clears throat> And you can use a cotton around too, but it might just take a little longer. And I'm just going to get that wet in the bowl. We're just going to take our wet SD wipe and just remove some of the makeup. And we're going to get it all off eventually, but we're just starting by just taking most of it off here. Since I know that her skincare routine um, currently doesn't involve exfoliating and she's also got dry skin. I'm going to use an exfoliant but um, since she has psoriasis and she's also sensitive I'm just going to use a leave-on exfoliant and uh, this is the gentle cream exfoliant 
from Dermalogica. It's got 1% lactic acid, but it's uh, it's mild enough that it's not gonna it's gonna work fine on somebody with sensitive skin, but it is going to exfoliate. But then it's also going to lactic acid will hydrate, and um, it actually will calm the skin. And if we can do a little bit of exfoliating and moisturizing, we're going to have a canvas that is easier to work with. Okay, so I'm going to leave that on for about 10 minutes. And while it's on, I'm going to take that 10 minutes of time and make use of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over the bridal contract, the reception location. Where's that at? That is at our church. Okay. I usually have my binder with me and I, and I use my binder as a clipboard so it makes it easier to have all your paperwork and then you don't need a clipboard and a binder. Well, we're going to take off that exfoliant and I'm going to use my bowl of water again. And I'm going to use an SD wipe. SD wipes are really good to have with you because they're a disposable washcloth, basically, and they can be used for a lot of things. So I'm going to start taking that off. And at this point, you just want to get most of it off because we're also going to be using another product to take it off and also to make sure that it's neutralized. I've got most of the product off. Usually when you think you've got most of the product off, there's a little bit of a residue left over. So you just want to make sure that you've gotten it all the way off. So what I usually do then is I use a toner. So I'm just going to take another SD wipe and I'm going to put some toner on it. And that toner is going to take off any residue left behind. But the toner this toner actually has a lot of um, hydrating ingredients to it, so we're going to also use this toner to get some hydration to her skin. And you can already see there's a little bit of residue on there. It's also going to neutralize the lactic acid, so it's going to stop it from working. And then it's also going to return her pH balance. Um, to what it was. So it's going to balance the skin back out. If you just want to close your eyes for a second, I'm going to spray on a leave on a spray on toner. And we're going to really use quite a bit of this. And this is the Dermalogica Multi Active Toner. And this has a lot of um, antioxidants in it, but it's going to be especially good for um, binding water to the skin because it has a hyaluronic acid in it and that is going to hold basically a thousand times its weight in water so it's really going to hydrate the skin and next we are going to use the skin smoothing cream and this is just a serious moisturizer um, since she has a dry skin type we're going to need some serious moisture here. Well, I'm just going to put the moisturizer on using uh, a brush. You can use a, a skin brush, but a, I find a foundation brush works just as well. So during the consultation is a good time to um, look over the skincare that they're using and you can make some suggestions so that the day of uh, it takes less time because you don't have to like, go through all these steps. So at some point during the trial, we're going to be doing under eye concealer and if that area is dry, then it's going to be more difficult. Uh, the concealer isn't going to go on as easily and it's also quite possibly going to um, crease and settle into any fine lines. And especially if you have a person with mature skin, uh, if that area isn't moisturized, you're just accentuating the 
wrinkles and fine lines. So if you just want to look up at the ceiling, I'm going to put on an eye cream and this is going to help just to make sure that that under eye area is really moisturized. So I'm going to match your foundation next and um, what we're going to have to do is mix a few foundations typically. So I'm looking at number 110 because this actually has uh, <laughs> this actually has a lot of pink to it. So um, I'm probably going to use that <clears throat> to add because she does have a lot of pinkness to her skin. We're going to be using probably number 127. And we're going to make some of that 110 to get a little bit more pink. Now I'm going to put a primer on. Um, the foundation primer I'm using is the Laura Mercier uh, foundation primer. They do have an oil-free one, but I really I don't like it as much. I'm going to put a little bit on my palette and apply that. And do make sure that you're not uh, applying, putting the primer on your hand or any products on your hand while you're at a job. I see a lot of artists do it on YouTube and at different places and even if your state does allow it, which it's not allowed in most states, it's not sand into your hands. Uh, might have bacteria on them and you're transferring that. Even if you wash your hands, you are losing about a million skin cells every 40 minutes. Um, so that's just kind of a little gross <laughs> to think that your skin cells are going in that product and then going on the client's face. You always want to just kind of, you know, follow sanitation practices and uh, I will be doing a video on that also if I have I did use the Laura Mercier foundation primer um, That's like my favorite primer to use on almost anybody if you do have a green primer That would be something that would work on somebody with sensitive skin because they tend to get a little bit red so it's going to um, correct the color of the skin a little bit before you apply your foundation. What I'm going to do next is just apply a little bit of a green concealer. So we're just going to apply some of this and then we're going to be blending it in. It's going to, the green is going to just correct the pink. It's on the opposite side of the color wheel. And I'm kind of putting this on like kind of messy because I'm going to be blending it in anyway. I'm just going to blend that in and I'm using a beauty blender. I use this to blend most products because it's faster, covers a larger area, you don't get any brush marks. And what I do with my beauty blender is I use that bowl of water and uh, get it wet, squeeze most of the water out and then use it to blend. It's also going to thin products down a little bit so you're not getting like too much product in one area, such as your foundation, you can build easier. So on to the foundation. <clears throat> I'm gonna pick up the foundation that we mixed and just apply it like in different areas of the face, like because we're gonna blend it with the beauty blender again. So and you want to start out with a light coverage because foundation is buildable. I like these beauty blenders because you can also get into small areas with them. So underneath the eye, if you just want to look up Amanda, you can get in underneath the eye with the beauty blender easily. So you're also going to notice that if you've used like a moisturizer and a toner and everything on your client that you're going to use a lot less product on them because it's not going to be soaked up by the skin. So we're going to leave the foundation as it is right now. Um, we may, we're going to be adding concealer later. Uh, 
just in case we have any cleanup that we might have to remove product. We don't want to set everything and add concealer until we're done with the eyes. Because fallout can really mess with your work. And if you've already powdered it, you're going to have a harder time with cleanup. You're going to want to prime the eyes first. And we've got a couple choices. My favorite and go-to is the Urban Decay Primer Potion. They have the anti-aging one now. I like this because with mature clients, it's going to add some extra moisture uh, underneath the eye, so you can use it on top or uh, on the under underneath the eye too. So you can also use your beauty blender to blend that in if you need to. If you just want to look up at the ceiling, I'm going to apply with the tip of my brush some primer underneath on the lower lash line because we'll be applying some product there too and you don't want any makeup meltdown in this area either. So I put together a little quad for you guys um, just kind of see the colors I'm using and I decided to go with Orb for the flesh colored one with her because it's got a little bit of pink in it otherwise I use brulee a lot uh, and then uh, we've got patina and bronze and carbon and these are all matte colors. I'm going to start out with my 217 brush or any stiff dome shaped blending brush will do. I'm going to take that flesh color, that orb, and if you just want to close your eyes, we're going to put this on most of the lid and this is going to give a nice base color but it's also going to make blending of the products easier. You're going to be using pretty neutral colors. Traditional bridal is all about a natural, soft, glowy look. All right, so then I'm going to take Patina and the same brush. And if you just want to close your eyes, I'm going to take that over about half of the lid. I'm also going to go up into the crease a little with this. I'm just staying away from the inner half of the lid. So I'm going to use, the next color I'm going to use is bronze, and then I'm going to, going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch to a MAC 239 or any flat stiff shader brush will do. I like this brush because it has goat hair, which is going to pick up more color. It's also going to give you less fallout. So I'm just going to pick up some of that on one side of the brush and then if you just want to close Amanda, I'm going to be packing the color on from about halfway on really close to the base of the lashes and then going outward. So you're kind of making an angle and packing that color on and then you're going to use your blending brush the 217 to just kind of blend that and with this again we want a soft look so what that means is kind of layering the colors and building them so that is what I'm doing is doing the same thing again and blending because that's going to help you build that color. Next I am going to take a 208 brush. A lot of you guys know this as my favorite eyeliner brush. And I'm going to pick up some of that carbon, the black color. Tap off any excess because you don't want any fallout from doing this. And if you just want to close and uh, I'm going to press the color on. You don't want to swipe it because then you're just going to get more fallout. And you're just pressing it against the lash line. Using a shadow as a liner with traditional makeup is always uh, something I do because again the look is about softness using a gel eyeliner or a pencil liner is 
going to be a little harsh for traditional bridal. It's great for like evening or a more dramatic look, but. So I am going to at the end of the outer part of the eye, I'm kind of bringing it out and up a little bit, kind of elongating the eye. And then what you can do is take your paper towel and wipe off the liner brush. And you're just gonna kind of blend that by slightly pulling upward on the outside of the eye. Next, what I'm going to do is use the Black Track Food Line and this is going to be waterproof, it's going to stay. And I'm going to use this just to enhance the upper lash line. Just to make the lashes look a little bit fuller, but without looking too dramatic for traditional bridal. So for this I'm just going to use just any pencil and I'm going to dip it in the fluid line. Using a pencil is going to be a less abrasive than using a brush because brushes have bristles which can poke people in the eye. So um, if you just want to look up at the ceiling and look up in that way, you can apply it to one half first and then look up and over there. And don't worry about this transferring to the bottom. We're going to clean that up if it does. So I'm going to apply, apply mascara to the top lash line next and I'm going to be using the Tarte Lights Camera Action. Holding their eyebrow is going to give you a lot of control. If they do blink, it's not going to be much of a movement. Make sure you apply to the top lash line or the top of the lashes also. We are going to let the top lashes dry, oh, man. and while that's drying, we're going to do the concealer, and we are going to do that in this order because you do want the under eye concealer to be set before you put any shadow underneath the eye. So I'm going to use a concealer brush on my concealer palette. And we're gonna go with a really light color, but with a pink to it. And we're just gonna be covering up any areas that might need a little bit of extra coverage. And then we're just pressing it on with the concealer brush. Don't swipe. And then using your beauty blender to press it in. I like using the pot concealers for blemishes or parts of the face, whereas I like to use a uh, liquid concealer underneath the eyes because it needs to be a little bit more emollient so to not settle into fine lines and wrinkles. So for the under eye area, I'm going to be using, what is this, the Select Moisture Cover <laughs> from MAC. And this is an NW15, it's the lightest shade that they have. And use my brush, and if you want to look up again, Amanda, I'm going to put it underneath the eyes. And I like using the brush to get it onto the skin because you can get close to that lash line. With that, if you want to look up again, I'm going to press it in with my blender kind of blend it out a heck of a lot easier than using a brush. And I'm going to set everything using the Makeup Forever HD Powder. This is going to be good for anyone uh, that is going to be on, possibly on video, because this is an HD product. And we're going to set the foundation. If you just want to close your eyes. If you haven't noticed, I've been giving her directions as far as what to do 
and it's going to be more comfortable for them because you know which way they should be looking or whether they should have their eyes open or closed. Uh, it's going to make it easier for you and more comfortable for them. The tip when working with the eyes is to have them always looking away from the tool. If they're looking in the same direction that the tool is coming from, it's going to make them blink more often. It's going to be more uncomfortable, uncomfortable for them. I'm going to set that under eye concealer also. So I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to use a big fluffy dome shaped brush. And if you want to look up, I'm going to use that to get right in underneath on the lower part of the eye. So now that that under eye concealer is set, I can do underneath the eyes and I don't want anything harsh so I'm not going to use a dark liner. I'm not even going to use a smaller brush like a smudge brush. I'm going to be using a shader brush because we want this to be soft. I'm just using the 239 from MAC and I'm going to go back to my little palette. And I'm going to take patina on the end of my brush and then tap it off. You don't want any fallout. You already fixed the, you already put the concealer on. So look up at the ceiling. We're going to run that on the lower lash line all the way across. So then I'm going to take bronze, the darker color that we put on the lid. And if you just want to look up again. I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to put it on the outer corner going about halfway in just to deepen the outer part of the eye. I've gotten a little bit of fallout. Don't freak out at this point. <laughs> just look up at the ceiling. Just use your fan brush and swipe it away. That's going to be your best bet. If you try to um, rub it, you're going to take out part of your foundation or smear it. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> to open up the eyes, and this is also good if, you know, your bride has a little bit of pinkness on in the inside of her eye. Uh, a lot of times they don't get a lot of sleep the day before. I wonder why. I'm going to use the Stila Kajal eye pencil and Topaz. I'm going to have you look up at the ceiling and we're going to run that on the inside lower waterline and we're going to do the bottom mascara for the bottom you're going to have them look up <laughs> after I get done with the eyes and this is why we've we've you know, start it out pretty light because we want her to be checking throughout. So, we're going to have her look at the eyes and tell me, do you want it darker Let's than see. that? So next we're going to do the brows. I have a couple different colors that I typically use depending on their hair color and their brow color. For people with blonde hair, I use Omega from MAC. For people with darker hair, I usually use Brun. And Brun is just kind of a smoky brown. It's kind of a little bit of uh, blackish brown. So what I'm going to do with since she's got some red in her hair is mix a little bit of Brun with a little bit of corduroy. Corduroy is, uh, is pretty warm. So I'm going to mix those two together <clears throat> and I'm just using a brow brush. This is a Tarte brush. It has uh, the spoolie on the end. Brush through the brows. And I do the brows after I'm done with the eyes because you might have to be using the brows to hold them to stabilize the eyelid. And then you would be running your work. And with Trishal Bridal and for a lot of work. I like to use uh, shadow in the brows because with the brows you want them to be really soft. 
So you're just going to make little brush strokes, filling in the eye at brows, following their natural shape. Move on to the rest of the face. Typically with our brides, uh, we do do lashes. We don't do them during the trial. Um, I used to do that and I'd have them uh, keep them and bring them to the day, you know, the day of the event and then I'd clean and sterilize them and put them on but then they'd lose them and uh, so what's the point? So what I usually do is just show them the lashes during the trial. I give two options, um, the babies and the Demi Wispies, both by Ardell. And the babies are just going to be very small and light and perfect for people who have never wore lashes before and want a really natural look or the, the, the Demi Wispies are going to be natural looking but more dramatic. And throughout the trial I have been writing down uh, what we're doing. So I have all of my notes on the face chart for the face, the rest of the face. So I'm going to start out uh, adding in a little warmth and I'm going to use a sculpting powder for that. And I'm going to go with Bone Beige for her since she's kind of light. And we are not sculpting, we are adding color and warmth. So we're going to use a bigger brush for that. We're going to use a flat powder brush and I'm just going to use the end of it and just going to add some of that underneath the cheekbones and then around the hairline and on the forehead. some around the jawline. For a blush, we're going to go with a NARS blush for this. I really like NARS blushes for bridal. And my favorite for bridal is the NARS Orgasm. And same brush because again we want this to be soft and I'm just going to apply it to the tops, to the apples of the cheeks and the tops of the cheekbones going back. And I'm also going to apply a highlighter. This is really nice for photography work. It's going to give a nice glow. What I'm going to use is the MAC Silver Dusk Loose Highlighter and Powder. This is my favorite for bridal. It goes over well with everyone. It looks great in pictures. And what I'm going to use to apply it is just a dual fiber cheek brush. This is going to pick up and deposit color better without making a mess. So just going to take it and place it right where you want it, which is on the tops of the cheekbones. We're going to move on to the lips next. Start out with a lip liner and I'm going to use, let's see, a Makeup Forever Aqua Lip, and this is in number 1C, and it is a pretty uh, neutral, like almost the same color as her lips, just a little darker. And with traditional bridal, typically you don't want anything really dark. Of course, after you do the lip color, You'll be checking with them and asking them if they want it darker. So I like to use stains for bridal. It's going to be less messy for the groom, but it's also going to last longer for the bride. So I'm just going to take a lip brush and my lip stain, and I've used my spatula to 
get the product out of the pot. And I'm just going to apply a coat of this stain. All right, so over that, because we want this to last as long as possible. So if it wears down, it's got to wear down through three parts. So we're going to do a gloss next. This way it has to wear through the gloss, the lip stain, and the lip liner. So what I'm going to use is a mineralized tinted lip balm from MAC. And this one is in Cherry Cherry. And I'm just going to use a lip brush for this and put it right over the top to give a nice glossy finish and it's also going to moisturize because we don't want any drying out of the lips because you put on a 24 hour lasting lip stain or something. What I'm going to do is set everything. You do want to use a setting spray. There's lots of these out there. Uh, I'm going to use the Urban Decay Oil Control Makeup Setting Spray. And just tell you right to close your eyes and at the count of three, you're going to spray. One, two, three. And do go kind of heavy with that. You want that to last. So that completes my video on how to do a trial with traditional bridal and after the trial you should have a completed face chart and you should be able to make everything go a lot smoother the day of because you already know what colors you're going to be using and what you're going to be doing. If you do send the bride home with some ideas on adding to their skincare routine then it's going to go a lot easier the day of also. I will be sure to put a list of all the products that I used on my blog and I'll link to my blog below. And don't forget to check out my website which is face to face with Violet and you'll find a lot of other interesting tutorials, makeup tutorials, uh, tutorials on skin and educational articles and tutorials. Also don't forget to check out my other channel which is face to face with Violet and you will find uh, tutorials on skin on there and I will put the link below to my website and my other channel. And thanks so much for watching guys and I hope you subscribe.